Hello everyone, it is Deafening Silence here with a new video. Sorry for the delay. Explanation for that's in the comments. Um, today, I'm going to be doing what I talked about in my Pokemon playthrough, one of my last episodes. I mentioned that I was going to be doing a collection series video of, of videos talking about all my games. And today, we are starting with... The oldest system I have. It is old and worn. But it is my Nintendo 64. And it is my first one. The reason I know is because it still has... The red cartridge. This red cartridge was needed to play Donkey Kong 64. Now I apologize in advance for some of these games being dirty. They actually were in my computer bag, which also is my art bag. So I had a lot of like pencils and stuff, and I've not fully cleaned all of them off yet, but. this particular game, you needed that special red cartridge to be able to save the games and play them. <clears throat> but it just so happens that the other Nintendo 64 games are able to save on it as well. So I went ahead and just left it in there and now I'm not even sure I can take it out. But yeah, we have 24 Nintendo 64 games here. It's not it's a humble collection, and I don't have a couple of the big titles that you'll be looking for, though I intend to get them. Um, I had a goal of going and recollecting all the games that I used to have, as well as some that I never got to play. And, yeah, so I kind of had to take a break from that, particularly to do the action figure collection that I'll eventually do a series of videos on. But I managed to get this built up a little bit. And so Donkey Kong 64 is a game that I've gotten through on a couple of different occasions quite far, though I have not fully beaten it yet. And that is a shame. Um, whenever I can get a nice converter cable that can make the Nintendo 64 games look really good on a HD TV, I'll be going back and playing through them and trying to complete them. But a lot of good memories with this game. You play as five different Kongs, including Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. You got different weapons they can use, and it's a really fun time. It's an open world game like Mario 64, so if you liked Mario 64, you might like this. Next up, we've got a game that doesn't need much introduction. It's one of the most popular Nintendo 64 games of all time, Pokemon Stadium. You will have seen this game, I believe. I'm having trouble remembering. It's been a while, but I had a couple of these games in my video game store roleplay video, which I highly encourage you to check out. I think it's pretty good. But um, Pokemon Stadium was all the rage back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And back when you were able to go to a Blockbuster or whatever your home video store was at that time, uh, you could rent games, and this baby was always rented out. And <clears throat> if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you can get some of these fairly inexpensive, depending on how much you want to pay for a game. Um, you'll pay less than the price of a brand new $60, $60 game if you're able to find it just right. But uh, to put in perspective how special this game was... Um, you know, the Pokemon games now on the handheld and the Switch are just now starting to be able to get to animations and fully rendered battle graphics just like this used to have all the way back then. And I also have Pokemon Stadium 2. This is one that I actually did get to rent more of whenever I was a kid. And I remember... Uh, the mini games that you could play on this one fondly. Um, 
I like the minigames on both games, but for some reason this one stuck out to me a lot more. And basically, same type of game as Pokemon Stadium, though you have, you know, the Pokemon from Generation 2 in it. And it's really fun. It's really fun. It's definitely a fun time with your friends to play it. Now this next one, I didn't play a lot of growing up, but I played it a little bit, but Extreme G, XG2. Um, I don't remember much about it other than it is a, like, futuristic racer of sorts. If you know Captain Falcon from, like, the Mario Smash games and the F-Zero games, it's very similar. And it was fun from what I remember of it, but I, I don't remember really much on it beyond that. It's been years since I played it. This racing game, though, I did play a lot of, and it's <laughs> kind of weird, but Beetle Adventure Racing. Now, the Nintendo 64, back then, they kind of had a thing where they did racing games based on different cars or car companies. Uh, they had this one. They had a, I believe it's called Ferrari Racing or Lamborghini Racing. I rented one of them and played it, but... Yeah, this is the one that uh, stuck with me fondly. You basically race in different beetles. And they get better or worse depending on what color they are, I believe. But this was the game where I was like, yeah, I've got to get a converter cable to make them look better. Because this game looked nothing like I remembered it being when I hung out with my friend when we were like 8, 9 years old and playing it. But it's really fun. A lot of cool courses. And you get to unlock cars as you progress through it, and it's pretty fun. Sticking with the racing, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have fond memories of this game, but Diddy Kong Racing. This was all the rage, a lot like Mario Kart, and Mario Kart spawned a lot of different franchises doing kart racing games. There was Diddy Kong. Of course, there was uh, Crash Team Racing, which is a very underrated game, pretty good. And then Jack and Daxter had like a extreme type game. I can't remember. I thought they had one like on the PSP or PS2, somewhere in there. But it was they had their own racing game. And Crash still does racing games to this day. But Diddy Kong Racing was a little bit different from Mario and that it had a slight bit of a storyline in it and it's funny I remember um, for most of the game I got through the different worlds racing with Diddy Kong but when it came to racing against Wizpig in the final I just could not beat him until I went to um, is it Crunch the alligator he's like one of the he's actually one of like the villains from the uh, Donkey Kong World, but I actually had to race with him because he had more top speed. Even though he was tougher to turn with, he had more top speed, and that's how I was able to beat Wizpig. Kind of funny, but um, yeah, it's been a I got through this game again a couple of years ago, and it was fun, but alas, I didn't complete it this time, but fun game. And I was actually very sore to get the new Mario Kart for Switch and find out that Diddy Kong's not on it stupid. So taking a break from the racing games, we've got NBA Hang Time. Pretty much NBA Jam. Um, crazy crazy uh, animations, crazy shooting, crazy dunk antics. It's a super fun like arcade style basketball game. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the specific little safe pack that you needed to be able to keep my saved basketball players and stuff so every time you turn it off you have to start back at the beginning and try to beat all 30 teams with your custom created character but very fun it's a very fun time to play with friends and stuff on that game and it's got some memorable quotes from it too kind of going back to racing but not in the way you're thinking wave race this was uh, one of the early games that I first owned, and then I had to, or I chose to get rid of it for some reason, and when I got back into collecting Nintendo 64 games, I had to pick this up. It's racing on the waves, racing with jet skis and stuff. 
there's four different racers you can choose and you go through a variety of courses and stuff there's a guy who's kind of a mix of speed and good turning there's someone who's good at turning but slow at speed there's someone who's top speed but not great at turning and I forget what the fourth one is but yeah you basically choose one of them and go through this and they made a sequel for um, the GameCube but I've never played that one really I believe it was a sequel but um, this one was really fun it was one of the games I played a lot when I first had my 64 more racing believe it or not but this one's in a galaxy far far away this has became a cult hit for Nintendo 64 gamers as well as um, Star Wars fans pod racing it actually is very fun I remember I didn't own this for a long time and I got it last year whenever I was collecting uh, games again but I remember renting it um, back when I was a kid and it's funny because playing these games that I own I can remember like music that I was listening to at that time like band and albums even and I remember at the time that I was playing this game I was discovering rock music and uh, it was the band embodiment and I remember listening to their album hold your breath while I was playing this and it's weird right but episode one racer is pretty fun um, you race through the different courses some, some like the boon to eve race but then other planets and such and you can race as Anakin, Sebulba, a couple of different other options and it's been a while since I've played this but I think you can even build your own but uh, yeah very fun very fun game now sticking with Star Wars and it still has the tack on it from all those years ago <laughs> Star Wars Rogue Squadron this is the first one I have played the third one that's on the GameCube. I've not played the second one. Um, I may still own the third one on the GameCube somewhere, but this game is very fun. Uh, it's got some designed missions for this game specifically, but then it has some of the classic missions that you'll remember from the movies. And you play as Anakin, or sorry, uh, Luke. You might, I think you play as Wedge in a couple of missions. Um, but you play the different ships and eventually once you beat the game you can go through different missions again with different ships and if you complete certain challenges you, you can unlock certain ships like the Millennium Falcon very fun game there's actually a couple of missions on it that are very very challenging there's uh, one with some giant machines the Empire has called World Devastators very hard mission on tougher difficulty I recommend playing this game if you're a fan of Star Wars and if you've seen the new Squadrons game that came out and you liked it at all, you need to go back and play the OG. For wrestling fans, you'll like this one. WCW versus NWO World Tour. They had a couple of successful games for the 64 during that time. This is one of them. And it's the, the other game I like. I'm trying to remember the full name of it off the top of my head, but I like that one a little bit more. But I happen to not own it for some reason. Um, but I used to. And uh, this game, of course, was made during the time that the NWO and WCW, WCW were at their hottest in their war against each other. And so you can play as the different wrestlers and, of course, their different wrestling attires that they have. Um, fun for its time. Of course, wrestling games have gotten a lot more solid and the animation's more smooth and such but you can still have a good time with those here's another um, kind of cult hit that Star Wars fans like and it is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire in this game you play as a character I believe he was Kree he wasn't Kree for this game uh, Dash Rindar I'm trying to remember if the book came out first or the game but it was a character that came from this series at least and the game is set in between episodes five and six um, a little bit of episode five because you do you are there at the Battle of Hoth but after that it's kind of like five up to before episode six 
and Dash Rendar, you'll play as him and go through different worlds and missions, and a couple of them were pretty creepy. And then the final battle um, against Pr Prince Caesar and the Emperor is pretty intense as you're in a space mission and you have to try to blow up Prince Caesar's skyhook in your ship that Dash Rendar has, and I forget the name of it off the top of my head. It's been several years since I played this, but it's a again a cult classic came amongst Star Wars fans. It can be challenging. I highly recommend it. Now, I have a couple of games here that every Nintendo 64 collector should own. Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Definitely should own these if you're a Nintendo 64 fan. Um, these were made by Rare when they were at the peak of their video game creations, or Prime, I guess you could say, their video game Prime. And you play as Banjo, and you go through his world. It's kind of a collect-a-thon type of game. There's many different things you can collect in the game. Some of them you use, some of them are collections needed to help beat the game. And they got a very unique way of talking. Um, they can wear thin on you maybe after a long time playing the game, but it's it's pretty fun. It's a pretty funny story too. And uh, between the two, I've played a lot more of Banjo Tooie than I did Kazooie. Um, this kind of goes back to renting games, but Banjo Tooie was the one that I was able to get my hands on a lot more than Kazooie. So I got to get through a lot more of this game, but we've gotten to play a little bit of it this year. Um, yeah, my wife and I, we basically did a little thing we called Random Tuesday, which I took all my games, all of them, that I own across all consoles and systems and put it in a randomizer in whichever game it brought up. Um, that's the one we played that night. And it came up with this one, so we actually started at the beginning. And she actually likes it. So, again, once I can get a converter cable and make it look better, we're going to proceed with the games. Now we've got a few Mario games here, of course. Um, I don't have the original Mario, uh, Paper Mario, sadly, and I don't have like a couple of the Mario Party games, like the first ones. They are hecka expensive to try and find. Um, that's going to be a challenge to find at a good price whenever I can start buying them again, but I do have some of them. For example, Mario Golf. This is pretty fun. Um, when Mario was getting into the sports titles, they were actually connecting pretty good on their creations. They had Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, which I'll show here in a little bit, Mario Kart, of course. And um, the later games that came out for like the GameCube and Switch were, or not Switch, um, Wii, were hit and miss. But this was a very fun game. And you play as the different characters across different golf courses, and you unlock different characters, but your end goal is to beat Bowser. And I actually managed to unlock Bowser um, by winning with Yoshi. Even though there's better characters than him, as far as ratings go in the game, um, Yoshi has a perfect straight shot, whereas some have a, you know, one that naturally goes to left or right. And even though Bowser could outdrive him by like a hundred yards, I was able to win with Yoshi by just keeping it straight and not missing putts. <laughs> but it's pretty fun. Um, I've played a little bit of the GameCube edition, and it's it's a little fun. But I have more sentimental, nostalgic ties to the first Mario Golf, the OG. Next up on our Mario Escapade, we've got the classic. Super Mario 64. I don't know if this was the first three-dimensional game that came out back in the late 90s, but it was one of the first. And this was a also one of the very first open-world 3D games. And it's the classic, right? You play as Mario rescuing Peach from Bowser by collecting all the stars that are spread out through the castle and amongst its different worlds that are contained in paintings until you can eventually take down the big monster Koopa himself. And it's, there are speedrunners that still 
play this game to this day, trying to get through it as quick as they can. Um, there are people that dissect the inner workings of the game, like the the make of the game and such, and so, so memorable, memorable, right? The different sounds, the different music, different creatures, and the characters, and yeah, if, if you are a true gamer, if you are a gamer aficionado, you have to play this, and you have to beat it. Continuing with the Mario run, we've got Mario Tennis, as I mentioned earlier. You play as singles or doubles, you unlock characters as you progress in it. It can get more and more intense as you progress the ranks. It's fun. And I've not played the later renditions of this game. I kind of had my sports fill with Mario, I guess I'm the 64. <laughs> but uh, very fun. I can't recall who are like the characters I mained with on it, unlike Smash or Mario Golf. As I mentioned, Yoshi was that, and Yoshi's my main on Mario Kart, always. From the 64 up to the Switch, it's Mar it's Yoshi. But uh, I think I use Mario a lot on this game. But again, very fun. All the sports styles for the 64 were fun. We're almost done with the Mario titles. Here's another classic. Super Smash Brothers, the original. If I had, if I had to pick what my favorite Nintendo 64 game is of all time, and if I had to pick my favorite game of all time, it's probably Smash Brothers. Not just because of how much I played it or how much I've went back and played it, which has been a lot for me, but this is the one game, the one game that I've been able to hold my own against anybody that I play. <laughs> I'm not a big online gamer. I'm not a big like competition guy. I've never been to one. Um, I don't enjoy the trash talking and the insults and everything like that that are on Call of Duty or Battlefield or anything else, Fortnite. But this game, I was always able to beat people with it. And I always mained Star Fox. Um, I still go back and play it from time to time, put myself through challenges on it, and I do okay. Um, and I've actually, <laughs> funny enough, I've not played any of the other ones. Um, I do own the GameCube one, and I played it for a little bit. Um, but I wasn't doing too great at it, and I was like, I swear, I'm so good at this one, why am I dealing with problems on that one? I think I was having latency issues or something. But yeah, um, Super Smash Brothers, classic, love it. Coming up on the last few games here, and this is the last Mario game. Mario Kart 64. Not the original, but it was the original for me. It was the one I grew up with. This game and Double Dash I have invested so much time into. And I don't hear a lot of people talk about Double Dash, but I'm just like... That was one of the better ones in the series, and it's the only one where you do teammates, and I don't get why they haven't implemented that in other editions of the, of the series, or at least give you the option to. Um, but this is, anyway, this is where it started. Just eight characters, just eight characters on the track, and racing through the different worlds. Some of them are very classic, like Bowser's Castle or Rainbow Road. Some of them can be very challenging, like Toad's Highway if you reverse the track and the cars are coming towards you. But, um, super fun. And I, I still enjoy playing this version as much as I play the Switch version or the GameCube version. Very classic. And I actually... I kind of prefer it to the Switch version because there's just a lot of characters on the Switch version I don't care for. And I'm like, why are they in this game? And some of them look very stupid and whatever <laughs> but uh, yeah so next up my other basketball game that I have for the game uh, the Nintendo 64 is in the zone 98 um, this is actually the one that I played the most of and I don't know why but I played a lot of it um, I remember <laughs> you can create players on here and I would actually go and create Michael Jordan in there because at at that time he owned his likeness and so he 
didn't put it in video games. It wasn't until NBA 2K11 that we finally got to play his, the GOAT, you know, his airness. But this game, yeah, I played it a lot as a kid because I'm a big sports fan and I love basketball. It's my favorite sport. And I owned this one. I owned um, the Kobe Bryant game for a little bit. And there was a game that had Allen Iverson on. I know that's the first like 2K game, but I don't remember owning that one. But I remember playing as the Sixers a lot during that time. I was a Sixers fan and a Lakers fan. Um, now I'm all Dallas, you know, I, I grew up with the Cowboys and now I'm a Mavericks fan, Rangers fan. If I follow hockey, I follow Dallas Stars who went to the Stanley Cup finals this past season. But, um, yeah, basketball is where it was at for me. All right. Last Pokemon game that I have here is Pokemon Snap, another classic. There's a couple of games. Um, I'm wanting to. I'm wanting to finish off my 64 collection. I used to have Pokemon Puzzle League. I got rid of it for some reason, and I'm very unhappy about that. But I want to get Pokemon Puzzle League and then a completed edition of Hey You Pikachu, just so I can have the whole set. And um, Pokemon Snap. You're in like this special utility vehicle, and you aid Professor Oak in going around to different sections of Kanto and photographing the Pokemon. And it's very fun. It can be challenging because you have to get great shots, and you have to shoot all the Pokemon so you have a chance to go take a picture of Mew. And there is going to be a Pokemon Snap for the Switch. I don't know when, but it's going to happen, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, put a lot of time into this and I actually need to sit down with my wife and play this but it's it's very fun <laughs> Bomberman 64 this is a very unique game for me in that it was a game that I and my dad both played we didn't play a lot of video games together um, but this was one of them and he, he actually we, we beat the game, um, and he completed some areas of the world in Bomberman that I actually wasn't able to. I just couldn't for some reason, but he was actually able to figure it out and beat it. Um, we played a lot of the Mario games together and a couple of the racing games, but I distinctively remember that the only reason I was able to finish this game as a kid is because my dad helped me. And he plays Bomberman, you go through the world, you know, trying to save everybody. And I distinctly, I distinctly remember enemies like Artemis. She was pretty cool. One of my favorites. And, um, yeah, this, I haven't played any of the other ones. I know the one for the GameCube was, or was the Xbox, was horrible. I know it was horrible. It's one of the worst rated games of all time by anybody. But uh, this game, very awesome. And it was very fun to play with friends, like the free-for-all mode. Now, last but not least, we've got the original Battle Royale shooter. 007 Goldeneye. Now, of course, it's based off the movie, which is my favorite James Bond movie, and I'm sorry, but Pierce Brosnan is the James Bond. Um, all the disrespect to Daniel Craig. All of it. All of it. All disrespect. Sorry, Daniel Craig, you are no Pierce Brosnan. I'm kidding, but for real, Pierce Brosnan is, is the James Bond. If it's not... Sean Connery. Um, but you play different missions in this game based off of what happened in the movie. But of course the big thing that people invested in was like the free-for-all shooter mode where you could play as the different characters, you know, for-for-all, you know, elimination style. Very classic game. Um, my stepbrother was able to, I was not, because I wasn't good enough, but he was able to go through this game was such a good speed runner he was able to get all the unlockables in it unlimited ammo all weapons big head mode all that um there's only been a couple of missions i've been able to do that and um it's it's still fun if you can get a version of this game that looks good such as a 64 with an updated cable they also re-released the game on later editions of systems and such if you're able to but I highly recommend it. This is the OG, like, shooter. And here we are, back to the number one. 
So that's going to do it for my video game collection, talking about my Nintendo 64 games. Yeah, just 24 here, but, but uh, I plan to increase this collection. If you'll notice, the Zelda games are not here. I have them on GameCube. They'll be in the GameCube collection. And I want to get them eventually for the 64. That was one of the ones, the expensive ones, that I need to get for it. And there's a couple other games like Conqueror's Bad for a Day and such. Um, but that's going to have to come later. And when it does and I get this collection to where I want it to be, I will do another proper collection video in the future. So thank you guys for watching. Um, the GameCube video will be out in a couple of weeks, hopefully. And I appreciate anyone watching. If you like video games, leave a like. Leave a good comment talking about your favorite games from the 64. Um, if you like my content here, I'd appreciate a subscription and hitting the bell so you know whenever my videos come out. And I thank you all for watching and subscribing. I've been gaining a little bit of speed on my channel, so I like it. And uh, take care, guys. Have a good holidays with your family if you're watching this around Christmas time. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.